This is Nancy with Nancy's Garden Soap, and uh, someone requested an overview of the different colors of micas that I use in my soaps. So I figured I would do that for you, and um, these are my packets of mica, and let me just show you real quick some of the different colors that, okay, I'm going to show you all the colors I have, so you can choose wisely when you're trying to find a color for your soaps. I'm rambling. This one's white satin. Um, your choices for adding white to your soap. Um, the ways that I know to add white to soap is to work with very white uh, fats like tallow or coconut. Um, and while that's not real practical, you can also use titanium dioxide um, dispersed in oil or water. And I believe there's also one that does both. Or you can um, purchase a white satin mica that's a combination of titanium dioxide and mica. benefit of this is that it disperses very well in your soaps. It doesn't make the soap as white as pure titanium dioxide is, but titanium dioxide gives you glycerin rivers. Uh, so they're like kind of translucent sections that, I don't know, wiggle through your, you can see them in your soap. Um, so this is easier to work with. Uh, this one here is a neon uh, called Radical Red. And this one here has red seven in it, resin polyester three. So this one you cannot use on the face. It's um, probably technically not a mica, but it is a red colorant. <clears throat> Looks pink there, radical red, bright pink. Um, this here is ruby red, and this one's iron oxide plus mica. And this one is famous along with its neighbor right here because when you put these two together, you can form a true red in soap. After the ruby red comes a shimmering Merlot. Now, if you look at these two, I don't think my cell phone camera is that great, but they're very similar. The biggest difference I see in real life is that this one has a more matte appearance, and this one's a little bit more shiny, glittery. Let me show you what happens when we mix equal parts of radical red and ruby red together. I'm trying to do this with the camera in front of me. I'm going to take a little bit of that and a little bit of this one. I usually mix these with the oils that I'm going to um, work with. Uh, some people, I believe, mix them with other things. Maybe alcohol, I'm sorry, if you're going to be working with melt and pour um, or glycerin is another one. I believe people who work with uh, cold process sometimes mix that with. Does that look like a real true red? No, it does in real life. And these neons don't tend to mix real well until you actually have them mixed with something. Let me add a little bit of water to that so you can see it. All right, there it is. Mix with a little bit of water. And I'll stir. And that looks pretty red. So you can adjust it a little bit by adding more of the neon or more of the um, the, the ruby red and uh, get our true red. All right, let me work on our next set. Coming right up. Here's the next set. Um, let's start up here. We have some pinks. This one here is called soft pink. Right like that. It's like a, looks like a um, pink with some titanium dioxide mixed in it. It does have titanium dioxide, mica, and iron oxide in it. This one here is called Ripe Berry. This one's one of my favorites. Um, it has slightly more, I'm not real good with color, but I'm going to say it looks a little bit more bluish um, than this one. And then we have after this a glamour pink that is brighter. And I have some of these Right up here, I stuck a little bit of the color on the paper here. I don't know if that helps you to see the difference. Like that. The um, soft pink being a lighter pink. Those are those three pinks that I have. Um, and then we have a neon orange and a clementine. Neon orange is this right here. And clementine, let's compare these two. Uh, the neon orange would be a neon, and I'm trying to see what the color.
color. It's called Outrageous Orange Neon, and technically is not a mica. It has polyester, a resin polyester 3 and a yellow 5 in it, and it looks like a super bright orange. And this one here is Clementine. That's a really nice color in soap. I don't think this camera does it justice, but there's the little streak right there. All right, next row we have um, yell Yelling Yellow Neon right here. Very bright yellow. And then a Sunflower Yellow that's slightly more gold um, compared to the other one. And then we have our greens. There's a Fruit Green right here. It's kind of a, a bright, happy green. Let me get my light back on. There we go. A happy green, um, if that's possible. This one's a slightly more mature green. This one's hunter green. I use this a lot with my rose soaps. And when I need a brighter, more cheerful color, I go with the <clears throat> fruit green. Um, I have one more green to show you, and that is peak green right here. I love this color. I believe I was able to duplicate this using one of the blues I have. Um, probably a, a magic blue or a um, bodacious blue, luster blue, combined with the sunflower yellow, but I'm not quite sure, I can't remember. I have it in my notes someplace. Anyway, I, I like this peak green. It looks a little bit like, uh, I don't know, I don't know what it's light, a light olive. All right, and this one here is um, shimmer, gold shimmer, right there. Has a lot of sparkle to it. Here's how it looks on my finger. And that is not focused. There it is on my finger that I need a manicure, but oh well. I like making soap. And here it is on the paper. So it's a very gold. It doesn't turn out this gold in um, soap, but if you were to put it onto something else, paint it on top of the soap, you would get a nice shimmer to it, I believe. All right, that is this section right here with the um, pinks, orange, yellow, green, and gold, and let me bring up the next section for you. Let me bring up the next section for you. All right, here's the next set. Um, we have some blues up across the top. This one's Bodacious Blue, uh, Bodacious Blue Neon here, and it is a very bright blue. Um, since it's a neon, it's technically not a mica, um, but I have some here on the paper so you can see. Oops, let's focus you in. Right there. And then this one here, I believe, is Majestic Blue. I don't have the, the label on it. But I would call this um, more like a, not like a navy blue, but it's approaching a navy blue. And it's a little bit more mature blue than uh, some of the other ones that are a little bit more fun. This one is called Luster Blue. And it's got a real nice sheen to it. You can kind of see it right there on the paper. And the one next to it is turquoise. So they're very similar. Um, I'm a little bit color challenged, I say. So they're to me, they're very similar, especially in the bags. Um, there we go. That looks a little bit different. Uh, the, the turquoise one is a little bit more turquoise. And the luster is a little bit more bright blue. Now, going down to the bottom row, I'm almost out of Cosmic Purple. That's this one right here. And the Cosmic Purple, to me, is a like a royal purple color, um, which you would imagine royalty wearing. Like that. Um, very pretty purple. That's probably why I'm almost out of it. The Majestic Purple is very dark. It's a really dark purple. I usually mix this with something else. Um, it's kind of like the difference between this majestic or magic blue and the luster blue is the difference between the majestic purple and the cosmic purple. One's, um, this one's bright and happy. This is more serious color, the majestic purple, even though that one's the one that says majestic. You would think that would be the one that would remind you of a royal robe. All right, next we have a cocoa brown right here. This is a shimmery color. Um, it's it's brown. 
and it's shiny. You can actually see it shiny on my finger there. So it's shiny, and uh, I use that in. I usually use cocoa powder when I'm making my soaps. However, there's sometimes when you don't want the fragrance of cocoa coming through in your soaps, and that's the times that I use this cocoa brown. Okay, um, and then I also have this copper mica that I have never used before in my soap, but I do have it. It's an orangey shiny uh see that shiny right there it's really pretty look at that shimmer um here it is on the paper and it it is a it's a very pretty color if you're looking for something it's a little bit metallic uh looking all right now the experiment that i wanted to do right now was to try to show you how i made this um this is a pea green color and i believe it was luster blue and a yellow so let me grab a new sheet of paper all right, just to show you that you can combine these colors to make um, other colors, I've got the luster blue in the middle, and I'm going to take some of this and put it down here, and then take some of it and put it over here, and some and put it over here, and see if we can get this to work. I, um, uh, what was I going to tell you? Something, oh, just want to show you that you can actually mix these colors up. I recommend that when you're starting out, you don't have to buy every single color, buy, um, the basics read the three uh, primaries and start with them i mean i would get white and i would get some uh activated charcoal and um what else i would get a blue i think when i started out, i got like a sunflower yellow a magic blue and the two colors to make the pink the radical red neon the sorry red radical red neon and um what was the other one called? The Radical Red Neon and the Ruby Red. All right, here we have a combination of Luster Blue and um, the Neon Yellow, okay? And that makes some kind of green, and I can add more to it here. So I'm contaminating my little stick we use the other side, like that. And we can mix. Don't move the camera, baby. Okay. Step back, sugar. That's it. What are you doing? I'm mixing colors. Why? Right, to show people what the colors look like when you mix them. Okay. So let me add a little bit more because I got a little bit blue. But I think the whole exercise is good. Seeing what colors you can make when you combine them. I think that is a, 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 a similar to the peak or to the fruit green that I had earlier. All right, so here is the, um, this is the green I made mixing the luster blue with the neon yellow, and it looks a lot like this, um, at least in real, in real life it does, looks a lot like the um, fruit green color that I have, similar at least. All right, let's mix this over here with yellow um, this is the sunflower yellow right there. We'll add a little bit of this to here. Use a Q-tip. Whoops, got it all over me. I'm making a mess. Should be no surprise to you. All right, if you watch any of my videos, you know I make a mess, generally speaking. No, I think I added too much, so let's add some of the, the blue here. All right, so I added a lot there. Let's slide that away. We're going to do this. <clears throat> I'm jinxing myself by saying I'm going to make a mess. Sure enough, I did. Okay, there we go. Add equal amounts of the blue and the yellow. We'll see what we can get here. I think this is the one that I mixed to get the um, something that was similar to peak green, this color that I liked. I think that's it right there. It was a combination of luster and sunflower yellow that made something like this. They're real similar right there. And the other green, let me show you the fruit green out of the bag. If I can. Okay, this is the fruit green out. Um, this fruit, oh! There it is. It's a, a, a lot uh, 
brighter. The fruit green's a lot brighter. But I do think that the, the peak green here is very similar to sunflower yellow mixed with a luster blue. So um, I hope you have fun playing with the micas. If you're just starting out, um, I would recommend you get uh, either titanium dioxide or the satin white mica. And uh, I would get something for black if you think you'll ever use black, something like activated charcoal. Um, then I would use um, the three primary colors, so which would mean four um, micas. A yellow, sunflower yellow being a good start. Um, the green, something like the hunter green or the fruit green. And the two colors you need for making the red, the radical red neon and the ruby red. And I think with that, um, you'd be pretty well set unless you really, really, really wanted to get the ripe berry mica. That was this one because I really love it. So let me show you the which, which ones they were. The, um, this one would be an extra, but it would be the white, the white satin, the um, radical red neon, it's a pink neon. I think Brambleberry has it as a bubble gum, a color of bubble gum something. Then here is the, the ruby red here. Those these two together make a true red. You have your white. A yellow, sunflower yellow would be my call on that one. Um, I started out with peak green here, but if you don't, if you can't get that one, I would go with um, the hunter green like this. And then something like a luster blue if you like brighter colors. Or the um, magic blue if you want a, uh, a lighter one. And with those colors, you can pretty much mix a lot of the stuff that you'll need at the start, and uh, you'll save some money. And then as you go along, you can buy more more colors and expand your repertoire. Um, all right, that's about it. I um, have mica all over the place now. But I hope this has been helpful to you, and uh, I can't remember who it was that asked me the question to show them different colors of mica. But I um, hope it's been helpful. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, um, you can write them down below. Or you can check out my website and contact me through there. I also have um, soaps that I've made using these different micas. Um, and you might be able to figure out which ones are which or ask me. I don't mind. All right. Um, my website's nancysgardensoap.com. Have a great day.